May your strength give us strength. May your faith give us faith. May your hope give us hope. May your hope, may your love give us love. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, theme song cry of the Right On segment that we end almost all the radio programs with because there's some things in this world that are the way they're supposed to be. And when people do those things, mm -hmm. when they do those good things, when they do those things that are good and right in the world, mm. We want that to spread to others. Yes. You want, you want other people. You, you, you want it to be catchy. You want that to be mm -hmm. uh, an, an airborne disease. You want that to be <laughs> to be commutable. What's contagion, the word I'm gonna, of contagion of goodness. Uh, contagion of goodness. <laughs> That's what you want out of the right things in this world. So we come up with a right on each week because there are so many good right things that go on in this world. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the start of the holiday season, and I, didn't, I, I learned something uh, the, the other day that I found interesting. Okay. The bell ringers that you see standing out in front of the uh, stores that, you know, do their little bell ringing. You know, those guys that ring that bell constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Those little bell ringers. Mm -hmm. They kick that whole thing off at the uh, halftime of the Dallas Cowboys football game every Thanksgiving. Oh. Did you know that? No. I don't watch those football games, so I didn't know that. They always have a big deal, mm. and that's when they start it. From Thanksgiving at halftime of the Dallas Cowboys football game yeah. until Christmas— you have bell ringers standing out in front of shopping malls, standing out in front of churches sometimes, standing on street corners asking you for a little dough. And it's a part of a group called the Salvation Army. Yes. So I thought I would let people know about the good efforts of the Salvation Army. A lot of people don't know this. Mm. The Salvation Army is a church. It's a, denom it's a denomination. They're an army. They're an army, <laughs> but they're a church army. Okay. Yeah. People think that they're like the United Way, right, or something yeah. like that, because, you know, they're so ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. They are the second largest charity wow. to the United Way in the United States in private giving. Second largest. They're massive. Right. They're lots of people, lots of places. And they're a really interesting story. And I think the right on goes out to what they do now, first of all, mm -hmm. but then also to their origins. Because how they got started, I find to be terribly inspiring. Oh. Now, okay, so there's a few things about this. Fa the fact that it's a church means, like, it's a Protestant denomination. It's like Presbyterians or Methodists or Catholics or Lutherans, right? Mm -hmm. It's like one of these groups. Yeah. And um, they have their own, from their roots, they have their own history to live with. So they're a Protestant denomination, which means they've got rules about this and that, and they've got mm -hmm. stuff that I think is is arcane, but they think is important. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying I'm into every. I'm not a Salvation Armyist. I don't even know what they call themselves. I'm a, like you'd be a Lutheran or a Methodist. I don't know what you would be as a Salvationist. I, I don't. I don't know. Salvation Armyist. But the the way they got started was there were these people in in England. It started in London. So something good did come out of our relationship with 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 England, as it turns out. Oh. So it started in London and uh, moved to the United States in about the 1880s. So very quickly. It moved here. But when it had its start, it was a man who said, look, there are people for whom the society doesn't take care of them. And there were a lot of people in, in London and in the United States and in Australia and in New Zealand, the first four places where the Salvation Army found its, found its roots. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people in those places at those times who there was no social safety net at all. There was nothing to take care of them. They were starving people. People would be thrown into debtor's prisons. There were all kinds of reasons why you needed someone to help these folks. So the originator of the Salvation Army said, look, there's three things that people are going to need. They're going to need soup. Soap, and only then salvation. Mm. And they get a right on from Doug Badger Radio because they said, look, the, the lived experience that you're having right now is preeminent to all other cares that we're going to have for you. It doesn't make any sense for us to talk about spiritual things if you're starving. So let's make sure that it's soup and soap because cleanliness, we now tend to see cleanliness as sort of a, as sort of a luxury Right? Because most cleanliness things in our society now, in 2011, in North American culture, is all about privilege. Mm -hmm. Specialty soaps, specialty uh, lotions, yeah. specialty cleansers, mm -hmm. things that remove the wrinkles from your eye as well as a sloughing skin, all of that kind of stuff. Well, not in the 1880s it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was all about your health. It, soap really represented the support of someone's health. So they were about food, they were about health, and then they were about religious connection. And the reason they ended up starting a church and not just an effort to help these folks was so many of the people who would benefit from the soap and the, and the soup were undesirable to the degree that they weren't welcomed into churches. <laughs> like, look, you people are so nasty. Yeah, like, like you're, you're, <laughs> you're and, not allowed and, in and the Lord's house. And you probably ended up not being able to keep a job for all kinds of reasons. You drink too much. Mm -hmm. You've got other addictions. You've got mental incapacities. You've got all these issues. 
yeah. that keep you out of our places. And at that time, churches tended to be organized much more around civic engagement and cultural inclusion than they did about reaching out to the least of these. Sure. Very sad to say in the United States that in the 1880s that was the case. Mm -hmm. So the way the Red Kettle comes out of all of this, the Salvation Army, they, so they organize and they like to organize out of, out of uh, military kind of, kind of, sort of like the Boy Scouts, right? Mm -hmm. like well, this, there's a Salvation Army guy r running a, uh, a little Salvation Army shop over in, uh, in, in um, San Francisco. In the 18 in 1880, and he remembered as a getting off of a boat in London as a as a sea uh, as a as a guy in their in their navy. He remembered saying seeing these kettles that were out there, and you could drop money in for the poor. And he's like, I don't see that around the United States anywhere. So he goes down to what's essentially Fisherman's Wharf. He puts out a kettle. He gets a permit, and he starts ringing a bell and asking people to throw their change in, because he wanted to have enough food to. To pay for the indigenous, to, to pay for the indigent people, in, indigent people, in San Francisco for one Christmas. Mm. So he starts ringing the bell. People start putting money in. It starts to spread all over. And the beautiful thing I think about this story of the Salvation Army and the Red Kettle is, it asks people to be a part of the soup and the soap, and without asking them to have to endeavor on their on their salvation question mm -hmm. because they really see them now they'll invite you to be part of it you can be part of that if you want to but they don't make it an obligation they don't make it an obligation for the recipient and they don't make it an obligation for the contributor mm -hmm. right on that's the way it ought to be i mean look i'm in, i'm big into religious conviction or religious belief i'm a religious person i'm a religious pastor this is what i do i i love that i want to tell the story of god's invitation for all people to join in the recreation of the world through the story of jesus that's what i do i get that but you don't want to say to somebody, you've got to start there. You can just as well say to somebody, join in caring for the needs of others, regardless if you ever end up in that other place, mm -hmm. and be the recipient. And the fact that they included women from the very beginning, and they said, because many of the other denominations didn't allow women to be in leadership, and they said, we will around here. Right on from Doug Badger Radio for these things. Members of the Salvation Army are Salvationists. That's what they call them, Salvationists? And, yes. And... Um, and you are an adherent when you agree. Oh, you're an adherent. Yes. A salvationist adherent, adherent. Until you get to the level of soldiership. Then you get soldiership. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that kind of stuff, you know, we're just going to leave that. I'm gonna, it's going to be like juicing. The right on juices out the pure right on, and then we let all that's the rest right. of that stuff slide That's the pulp go Because all that, I, I don't get the whole military metaphor. But kettle ringers, people putting money in that kettle. Industrial age. Uh, Good for you. Mm -hmm. Right on. May your strength bring strength. May your hope bring hope. May your faith bring faith. May your love bring love. May your money bring soap and soup. Yes. I'm Doug Padger Radio. Stick yeah. with us. We'll be back next week at AM 950 and over at DougPadgerRadio.com. Hang in there. It's that time of year again. The 8th Annual Blue State Ball is coming to